Bats are quite famous because they are often used in popular media. From myth and folklore like their association with vampire, to superheroes, to card games, video games, you name it. Even so, the usage of bats in a lot of popular media are quite typical if I do say so myself. In real life, bats are actually quite diverse. There are bats with flat nose, but also those with fox-like face. There are bats with large ears, but also those with small ears. There are hairy bats, while there are bats that look hairless. There is also this interesting looking bat called Fizzard Bat, which, to be honest, I was planning to make a video of it. But then I thought, hey, I recently made a video on Hammerhead Worm. I talk about Hammerhead Shark for a bit in my Animal Kaiser video. So, why don't I talk about Hammerheaded Bat instead? This one is also quite unique after all. So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is Hammerheaded Bat? Just like any other bat, hammer-headed bats are mammals. And of course, it's a bat. They are megabats, also known as old-world fruit bats. So yeah, they are classified in the same family as the relatively famous flying foxes. However, flying foxes are not their closest relatives. Their closest relatives will be the appellated fruit bats of the Africa. The hammer-headed bat is the only species in its genus. Ipsinatus monstrosus, which basically translates into the monstrous high jaw. If it's not obvious enough, it's named after its highly curved rostrum. And when you look at it from the front, it kind of looks monstrous. But I'm pretty sure some of you would think it looks cool or even cute, so it is what it is. We'll talk about this unique rostrum later on this video. They are distributed in West and Central Africa which makes it quite obvious how their closest relatives are also African fruit bats. So yeah. Next, let's talk about their morphology. Even though they are not as large as the flying fox, they are still quite large, with a wingspan of around 90 centimeters. They are covered with long and smooth dark brownish fur. They have triangular ears, and just like other megabats, they have a pair of large eyes. They have five toes, all equipped with claws. Their wings are actually relatively short compared to their relatives, especially considering how heavy they are. Speaking of heavy, males are way heavier than females, weighing more than 400 grams, while females are typically around 200 grams. So, what's with the weight difference, you might ask? Well, it actually has something to do with their unique traits. Their snout, the big muzzle, which is actually a resonating chamber. Male's muzzle has an enormous pendulous lip with a hairless split chin. Females don't have this structure. So yeah, females have narrower snout and is quite similar to the typical fruit bats. The comparison is also easily noticeable when looking at their skull. Left is the male, while right is, naturally, the female. Notice how the male has a really high nasal opening compared to the female? And yeah, this is of course relevant to their behavior which I'll talk about in the next section. While we're looking at their skull, notice how the second premolar and the molars are lobed? This is actually unique among African fruit bats, and it's the diagnostic character of the genus. I'm gonna talk about the functionality of this big muzzle in the behavior section, which is literally right after this section. But before that, as always, Hammerheaded bats live in lowland forests, many kinds of forests actually, including riverine forests, swamps, mangroves, palm forests, etc. As long as it has enough fruit trees. And if it's not obvious enough, they are fruitgivers, meaning they eat fruit. They have a large and powerful tongue with trefoil tip. They have tridentate papillae which are facing backwards. These are used for rasping fruit juices. And yeah, they usually don't eat the whole fruit. They just chew the fruit, swallow some pulps and gulp the juice, and the rest are spit it out. It is noted that they prefer mangoes, bananas, guavas, soursops, and especially figs. In fact, figs are their main diet. Males and females have different foraging strategies. Males deliberately look for rich food patches, even roaming up to 10 kilometers to search for a rich food patch. Meanwhile, females deploy the trap lining strategy. Basically, they have their own set foraging route, which they follow every day. 
regardless of food richness and quality. Some will eat the fruit on the spot, while some carry it to a relatively safe spot. Oh, by the way, there is one mention of them scavenging meat scraps and attacking chicken, so they might exhibit opportunistic carnivory, but I personally wouldn't declare so without more evidence. Anyway, they are mostly active after sunset. During the day, they roost on the canopies, hanging upside down like the typical bat roosting posture. Several individuals can roost on the same canopies, but not closely together. Typically, only 4 to 5 individuals roost together, but the roost with up to 25 individuals have been observed. During breeding season, males are territorial, so they don't roost together. During these times, females may roost together with a male, but typically females roost between males' territories. Now it's finally time to talk about their big muzzle. As I've said earlier, this functions as resonating chamber. These are used to amplify their voice, especially during breeding season. They typically exhibit lag mating system, where males gather in an open area and engage in competitive display to attract females, although some populations don't exhibit this behavior. In the case of hammer-headed bat, the lacking arena is typically along streams or riverbeds, and their form of display is their noise. They make loud honking noises like this. <laughs> Quite obviously, these noises are made to attract females. This lacking period lasts for 1 to 3 months, and males can honk for 4 hours straight before taking a break and nourish themselves. Attracted females approach the male, mate with them, and then fly away. Males will continue their honking after mating, and this continues till the lacking period is over. The center male typically gets the most mate. By the way, their anatomy also greatly supports this behavior. Males have a really long larynx, three times longer than female. This larynx fills most of their thoracic cavity. It even pushes some organs away, namely their heart, lungs, and alimentary canal. By the way, this is a comparison so it's easier to understand. Larynx is the air passage in your neck, the one that you use to make voices. Now you should understand how exceptionally long the larynx of male hammerheaded bat is. It's half of their vertebral column. So yeah, it's definitely a big deal. But anyway, this breeding season occurs twice a year during dry seasons. Females give birth after around 5 to 6 months of gestation, and technically, they could get pregnant twice a year. They produce one offspring each breeding season. Females develop faster compared to males. Females reach sexual maturity at 6 months old, and reach full size after 9 months. Meanwhile, Males take 18 months to even reach sexual maturity. Besides that, males haven't developed their resonating chamber until after 12 months old, so it's not easy to identify the sex of young individuals. Another interesting thing about their reproduction is, they don't exhibit the typical XXXY karyotype. Males only have one sex chromosome, which makes the female XX and the males XO. They share this trait with some other African fruit bats, so it's not exactly unique. Although they might look quite unique, and it's quite rare to see them in captivity, they are not rare in their natural habitat. They have a relatively wide distribution range, and their populations are thought to be stable and large enough. Hence, it's classified as least concerned by the IUCN red list of threatened species. Because they are frugivorous, some consider them as pests. Their loud noises amplifies that sentiment, because, admittedly, it can be quite annoying if you are forced to hear it for hours each day for at least a month. In some areas, they are hunted and eaten, which is not only is potentially bad for their survival, but also potentially bad for human survival, because, well, they are a potential reservoir of Ebola virus. Emphasis on potential, because there is no definitive evidence of it yet. Still, research on their potential as Ebola virus reservoir are being done. In fact, some facts about their populations and behavior that I talk about in this video are obtained from research on their potential as Ebola virus reservoir. So yeah, who knows what fact about them will be learned in the future. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way. In one of the references, there is an interesting statement that males are fearless during lacking, and they are not bothered by human stalking, rapping, and even gunfire. 
Could you imagine rapping alongside their honking noises? That would be quite something. But anyway, enjoy your day.